Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. All of this is to say is that money is not at the top of the list. So when, when an employee says they want more money, the first thing a manager should hear is they want something besides money. And it's not that more money wouldn't be helpful, but it's not really what they want. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. A lot of people think they want money, But over and over, studies show that more money doesn't make people happier. Perhaps you've heard the expression. However, money does symbolize what we truly value or what we truly love. Today, we're going to dig into our messy, complicated relationships with money to learn a little bit more about what we really want as individuals. I offer weekly member webcasts, online courses, and mentorship at clearandopen.com because it's my truth that with the right tools, anyone can eliminate the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business. And I share parts of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you, too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open the podcast app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. Thanks so much for listening. Let's start the show. Joseph, have you uh, seen there's a, a Reddit, it's actually a subreddit called Change My View? Mm, no, I like it already though. It's fascinating. And it's a, it's a completely civil, moderated place where people who you got to intentionally want, you have to have a view that you want to have changed. Mm -hmm. Only you can know that, of course, but then you go and you put your view out there and why you think it. And then incredibly thoughtful people come on and and attempt to change your view. And then you upvote people who do. It's really cool. I love that. Score one for the evolution of consciousness. What a cool model. And of course, it's a, now I, I love that the you have to want your view to change. Now that's an incredibly important idea. There, what does it take in someone to 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 be able to have enough meta to go? I have this view, and it's not really working for me very well. It causes cynicism. You know, I have a view that people suck, right? And it causes cynicism and depression and suffering, and it's hard to make new friends, and it's definitely hard to keep friends. And I want a different view. This view is not working for me. But I have this preponderance of evidence that people do suck. And maybe I've just got some filter. Can you help me with this? Now, that's a rare, rare person. But that's what it takes, right? Because before that is, well, this is how it is to me, and this is reality, and no one's going to con- convince me otherwise. You have to get to that place before you get to, oh, people don't suck. They're really doing the best that they can. Or some people do, and some people don't. Or whatever the alternative view would be. You have to get to that middle place. That's like a kind of maybe, where you go from a no to a maybe to a yes. The maybe is in between. And that maybe is a kind of meta need the ability to step outside yourself and look back and actually evaluate the glasses that you're looking through and see, hmm. as the Grateful Dead song says, uh, maybe the dark is in your eyes. I'm a shakedown street. How this all applies to management is really simple. Your people say they want more money. Just like they say they want a dark, rich roast. (laughs) Now, do people want more money? Do employees want more money? Sure. Find me someone who doesn't want more money. Everybody wants more money, right? Just like they want, I don't know, a bigger house or whatever. It's sort of an an easy out. But it's not what, you know, in, in my industry, when coaches get together, we laugh about it. We get together and be like, oh, I had a client tell me that they think their client, their employees just want more money. Oh, that one again. Oh, yeah. What'd you do this time? Right. It gets kind of boring. 
Because study after study after study, going back to the 40s or 50s, shows that more, more money is not what people want. It's on the it's on the list, and the the lower paid they are, the more that's the case. You know, if they're making less, fifteen twenty dollars an hour, money becomes a, a higher factor. But after a certain point, it's a red herring. It's not what people really want, and it's actually pretty easy to demonstrate that it's not what they want because money doesn't exist. Money is a symbol. You guys ever watch Gilligan's Island? I know the older people in the room. We, we all know Gil- Gilligan's Island, right? Mr. and Mrs. Howell, they have suitcases of cash with them on the island, right? And every once in a while, they would like bust out like, Mr. Howell, like, I'll give you $100,000 if you... And, and everybody would just laugh at them because their money meant nothing on that island, right? A banana was more valuable than $100,000 in the suitcase because it's a desert island, right? Why? Because the money has no intrinsic value. A banana has intrinsic value. You can eat it. No, you could argue uh, that the money has some intrinsic value because you could burn it for heat, like they, they, they did with the Deutschmarks and, uh, after World War II. But that wasn't, it's not very valuable. It's less valuable than firewood because paper doesn't burn for very long. It doesn't produce a lot of energy, right? So even in that case, a log, good sized log, you know, like 10 inches in diameter, would be more, va- more valuable than a suitcase full of money. So money is a symbol of value. Money is not valuable of and to itself. Money is valuable valuable because of what you can do with it. That's where the value of money is. So everybody likes money. And who doesn't want more? Right? So you could say in one way, that's a universal. Everybody wants more money. My employees, they all want more money. Yes, that's homogenous. But what's heterogeneous is what the money means to them, what they will do with it. For some people, money is power. For some people, it's choice. For some people, it's freedom. For some people, it's clothing, style, fashion, fun, an addition over the garage, romance, excitement. Money can, is an infinite, it's a different thing for every single person. But you know what? Most people don't even know what money is for them. They just know they want more of it. But they don't actually ask themselves, what is money to me? What, what's valuable about this? What do I get to do with it? What do I want to do with it? What would I actually do if I had 20% more money? There's a uh, in a book called Richistan, there was a study done where they asked people from poverty level to uh, multimillionaire how much money they wanted to have. And overwhelmingly, the results showed that if the net worth, if their net worth was X, inevitably the, their money goal was 2X. So if they had $1,000 to their name, their dream was to have $2,000. If they had $200 million, their dream was to have $400 million. That's overwhelmingly what, overwhelmingly what it showed. What this to me... Was, uh, was there a bell curve to that at all? Or was it pretty universal? I have no idea. I just know that that was a, at least a majority. Okay. That's what I wonder. It's a good question. The, the point, though, is first to get that if you are a human being, you have confusions about money. And this is going to be part of what the next course is about. Because money is a symbol of what we value. And another way of talking about what we value is what we love. And we're all very confused about love. And so we mix in our confusion about love with money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we think we need more, we need more, and we need more. Yet we all already know money doesn't buy you happiness. So why are we so focused on getting more? It doesn't buy you happiness, but it certainly increases the odds. Not necessarily. I mean, if you've... Okay. Not necessarily, but I think in, in a lot of cases, right? Do like you know I've the statistics had, about people who win the lottery? What happens to them? I know what happened, happened to me. I've had a lot and I've had none and I definitely was happier with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if that's true in aggregate. That's fair. In aggregate, yeah. Certainly there are... Uh, 
individual cases for sure. But the way I see money is it, it amplifies. Whatever you got going on, money is going to make more of it happening. You got a lot of good stuff going on, you're going to get more of that. You got some bad stuff going on, you're going to get more of that too. It's like, um, it's like uh, if you blow up a balloon, you know, you blow like a Mickey Mouse balloon, like there's this tiny little figure on it and you blow it up and there's a giant Mickey Mouse. Well, if there's a flaw on a balloon, like in the latex and you blow it up, it's going to get bigger. That's what money does. Everything gets bigger. Hence the phrase, more money, more problems. Right? It's like having, if you have a messy 2000 square foot house and you go, man, this place is a mess. We need a bigger house. And then you get a 20,000 foot mansion, you're going to get a bigger mess. Especially if you don't have the ability to uh, maintain it. All of this is to say is that money is not at the top of the list. So when, when an employee says they want more money, the first thing a manager should hear is they want something besides money. And it's not that more money wouldn't be helpful, but it's not really what they want. Because after all, money doesn't exist. So for example, you know, in Sam's case, like what were, you want to speak to it if you want to, what, what did you have when you had more money? What did you have more of in your life that was so good? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, I had more options. Okay. So for me, it was options and security, not money, right? Okay. So security is one thing. Let's set that aside. Options is different. Yeah. By options, you mean like a kind of freedom? Well, I guess, yeah, sure. Because if I can buy the better car, then I can drive further or, or, what, or whatever. I can buy the plane ticket to go to the place where otherwise you're, you know, I can go, I can go to the good college instead of the bad college, that, which opens different doors to different things. So it was like opportunity. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's sort of what I hear you saying. Yeah. Okay. So notice what I just did there. I kept trying to get deeper, more granular. Well, okay. You talked about options. Is that about choice? Because options is sort of vague. That's fine. It starts there. Is that about freedom? No, no, it turns out it's more about... I've forgotten the word already. What did we just say? Opportunity. Opportunity, right. Okay, so security and opportunity, right? So if Sam were my employee and came to me and said, he says, boss, I want to raise. I would go, okay, raises are cool. Everybody likes those. Maybe the, maybe the business has that money. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe your job can bring in more revenue for the company or whatever and justify that. But what really do you want? And, and that's where I would want to go to. And we would eventually end up at security and opportunity. Now, as, that, as a manager then, I'm thinking, okay, how do I give Sam more security and opportunity without giving him more money? Because the business doesn't necessarily have it. Newsflash for non-business owners, there's not like some giant coffer of cash in, in, the, in the boss's office where he just like doles it out like there's you know an infinite supply of it. This is hard for people who've never been self-employed to understand. Like when you ask for a raise, there may not be money for that. <laughs> okay. So my my question to that is the it sounds like the opportunity that Sam was describing with money isn't necessarily something that you as the manager and your uh theoretical situation could replicate. Well, that's, that's where you get creative and imaginative, right? Like, okay, well, uh, opportunity like buying a plane ticket, okay. I can't help you with that. The business has mo- no more money right now. You know, we're at X percent net profit and that's actually below industry standards and yada, yada, yada happens. So business can't afford to give you a raise. However, I hear you're interested in uh, security and opportunity. Let's talk about how I can help you with that without giving you more money. You want job security? You know, that's a form of security. Do you want opportunity in getting promoted in this company? Do you want to talk about what you would have to do and who you'd have to become to be able to take your boss's job, to have my job? You know, what skills you could have that would make you more marketable in the workplace? You see, that shifts the conversation. That could take it anywhere. And that's the idea. 
Now, I, and this can be done in a kind of snarky kind of reframe, like, well, it's not about money. What do you really want? Sharing money. I'm a huge believer in employee ownership, right? Um, I think employees should have an equity stake in the business. I think that's ideal and great. And employees should be paid as well as they can be. But they're just realities. you know. They're just realities. So what I'm pointing to here is that managers can give immensely valuable information, training, skill, awareness, insight that is far more valuable than money. I won't be specific about how much my first uh, coaching job paid, but it was um, an apprentice salary. You know, it barely paid my bills my first year at EMS 16 years ago now. And that was their model. We will take someone who knows nothing about business, who's just a good listener and eager to learn, and we will pay you the absolute minimum and tell and teach you everything you need to know. And you know what? It remains to be that year of my life was one of the best honeymoons I've ever had in my life. It was like a playground for consciousness and growth and learning because that was valuable to me. And they didn't hire people who just wanted money. I wanted to learn. And I still look back and think about the conversations I had with my managers and mentors there. They, it's an inextricable part of who I am today. And you know what? I make a hell of a lot more money than I did then using what they taught me <laughs> that I earned for an apprentice wage where my time was being billed out at hundreds of dollars an hour and I wasn't even getting 10% of that. But you know what? It was worth it because of what I was learning. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcasts app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com slash review and it will bring you to the right place. If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.